Hello everyone. In this lecture, I'll be talking about SQL Lib3 library, which allows us to run SQL command and Python notebooks. SQL Lit is a simple relational database system, which saves its data in regular data file or even in the internal memory of the computer like the RAM. Like any other library, we need to import it first. So we import SQL Lit3. To use a database, we have to create a connection object. The connection object will represent the database. Here you can see an example. Connection equal SQLit3.connect, which is a reserved word, and then we have the name of our database. Let's say DSA5970, and the file extension is DB. If we run this, you have created a database with the name DSA5970. To be capable to send a command to SQL or SQL it, we need a cursor object. So a cursor in SQL and databases is a control structure which traverses over the record in your database. So I define a variable named cursor, then I call our connections.cursor. And then we will be able to write SQL command and run it. The very first step is to create a table or relation. And here you can see the SQL command, which is very similar to SQL script. So I define a variable named SQL underline command with quotation marks. And we use the create table keyword. So create table, I'm creating a table named students. And here are the attributes or columns. The first one is a student underline number. Its type is integer and it's our primary key, like a unique identifier for this table. And the next attribute, its first name, f name, which is a variable character with maximum length of 20. Next attribute is last name or L name. Its type is a variable character with maximum length of 30. We also have gender, which is just a character with length one. And then with joining date, we allow to define date. So technically with this, we will be able to retrieve date into SQLly. For example, for birth date, then its type becomes date. Now here's a note. So if you run into errors, check to make sure that no formatting has been applied to the quotation marks. So you can see there are only three quotation marks from the beginning and the end. And in order to execute this SQL command, you call the cursor dot execute. Otherwise, this table is not created. Now let's try to implement this in the notebook. First, we input, uh, import SQLit3 library. Then we create a connection object. Tree.connect. And then the name of the database, DSA5970 dot db. And then we define the cursor variable. So I can add commands here. So this creates a connection object. And then cursor is connection dot cursor. And add a command here. Or a comment, a cursor object to traverse over the records in a database.
Now I run this. There's a typo here, connection. Okay. Now we can create the table using SQL command. First, I create a variable named SQL underline command. Create table named students. The student underline number is the first attribute. It is an integer. and also our, our primary key. Each table needs a primary key. The second attribute is first name. There's a variable character, maximum length of 20. Then we have the last name, which is again a variable character with maximum length of 30. And then we have gender, which is a character, length of 1, retrieve date into SQL lead joining date and then the last attribute is birth date and its type is a date semicolon quotation mark and remember we need to execute this so cursor dot execute this SQL command we run this See this error. So to fix this error, let's check the cursor variable. So cursor equal connection dot cursor. We are missing parentheses here. So let's run this. Let me make it students. Okay, here we go. Now, this table is created. So the, we, um, so the issue was of this parentheses after cursor. Okay. Now we have created a table named a student. And go back here. We executed the SQL comment, a command and now we can insert tuples. We can add records to that table. Now we create another variable SQL command. Again, three quotation mark, and the keyword is insert into students. So after insert into, we expect the table name or the relation name. And then we list the attributes we just defined, the student number, first name, last name, gender, and birth date and then the keyword is values then we assign values to each attribute let's say the student number is one first name william last name sure gender male and the birth date 
And again, we need to execute this SQL command. So cursor.execute. Now let's say we want to add another tuple or another re record. So I define another variable named SQL command. You can change this variable if you want the name. Insert into a student. Again, we list the attributes we have for that table and values. Now you assign new values. Frank, Johnson, female, and the birth date. And then we execute this SQL command again. So after you are done with inserting tuples, never forget this part. So if you want the changes to be saved, always call connection.commit. Then these two records are added to the table. Now let's try to implement this. I add a comment here. We want to insert tuples of records. So I define SQL command variable quotation marks. insert into the student and then their attribute in that table is cd number the student number first name the same attribute we defined for the table last name gender and birth date. Then values. Now we can assign values to these attributes. One, William, Sure. Let's go with M. And the date is, let's say, 2001, 10 October 25th. Then we add semicolon. Then cursor dot execute this command SQL underline command let's run this first okay. now we can add another record or tuple so we define SQL command the keyword is insert into the table name a student here student number I can actually copy and paste from And then we add values. Let's say the student number is two, Frank Johnson. Email and the date is two thousand August seventeenth. Semicolon 
then the quotation mark. The next step is to execute this. So cursor dot execute the SQL comment. Now we have two tuples in that table. The last part that we shouldn't forget So I add the comment here never forget this line. And we need to commit so we call our connection object connection dot commit and don't forget parentheses as well okay so so far we created a table we inserted tuples to record and now we can write queries for writing query we select the table or select the attribute of the table and select is the one of the keywords uh, when we want to write queries in SQL script. And here you can see a very simple example. So we cursor.execute, and now we have the SQL script, which is a simple one. Select everything. So that's the asterisk you see. So select everything from a student table. And then result, we define a variable which contains the result. To do that, we call cursor.fetch all. Now everything is saved in that variable. Now we want to print it. So I write a for loop for R and result print R. So technically we want to see uh, what we have in that table, right? Because select a star means to select everything. Now let's um, run this and see what the result looks like. So in this part, we are writing query. So we call our cursor, execute. So a cursor object traverse, um, traverse over the records, just remember that. So cursor.execute, and then we have the SQL script, select everything from this table and then we want to save result in a variable so you can change the variable name so I call cursor dot fetch all so fetch all is the new function which assigns everything to that variable based on the SQL comment uh, that we wrote And now we can have our for loop. Oh, don't forget the colon and then print R. So let's run this. Okay. Now you can see our two records. First off, it's toppled, so you see parentheses. And in that table, we have two records one William Shore M. And um, let's see. And the birth date. So that none is for the joining date that we defined over here. After gener uh, gender, we had the joining date, and then we have the birth date, which is listed. So with this simple query, we can see everything we have on the record in that table. So the important part, we use the fetch all method. After the cursor, we assign it to this variable. Now it becomes a variable uh, in Python, so we can apply for loops and we can go uh, through all items in that tuple. Okay. So this was a simple example. We had only one table, so we started from a scratch. We created a database. We created a table, we inserted tuples, and then uh, we wrote a query. Now let's say what happens when we have multiple tables. In this case, we need to use the concept of foreign keys to link tables. 
So in that, we want to add another table. So let's add table takes for students taking a class. So again, I'll go through the create table command. I run it, and but this time, we uh, you see a foreign key, which should be the primary key of another table, and that's how we connect two tables uh, in relational database. So I write another variable representing the SQL command. We use create table takes takes. So takes ID is the primary key. Then we have class number, which is an integer, class name, variable character with maximum length of 30, semester, variable character again, and then a student number, which is an integer. And we know that the student number is the primary key in uh, the table that we just created. And then you execute this comment and here is the uh, comment here if you want to drop table you can use this line of code drop table takes okay then we don't want to do that so let's create this table so sql underline command is a variable The quotation marks. The keyword is create table. The table name is takes. Then we have takes underline ID. Its type is integer. And this is our primary key for this table comma then we list attributes class underline number its type is integer comma another attribute class underline name its type is variable character with maximum length of 30 comma and then we have semester which is again a variable character maximum length of 20 then we add comma then we have a student number and its type is integer this is the primary key of this table that we created std underline number now it becomes like a foreign key in this table so a student number integer then semicolon quotation marks so we created this table, now we need to execute it. So cursor dot execute. Execute the SQL command. This is a typo here. Primary key. Let's run it again. Okay, now this table is created. Again, we need to insert tuples to this table, into this table. So we write another SQL command. The keyword is insert into takes. Then we'll list the attributes we define for this table. And then with values, we assign value to each attribute. And in this example, takes ID is one, class number 1315. It's from chemical, fall 2020, and the student number is two. It means that this is the second student that we added to the table. And then we execute it. Here you see another um, SQL command. So we want to insert two tuples. So insert into takes. So this student is taking DSA 5970, fall 2020, and the same student number. So 
the same student is taking two uh, courses for fall 2020. So we execute this command again, and the last line that we shouldn't forget, then we need to commit. So connection.commit, now these two records are saved in our table. Now let's try implement this. SQL command. Quotation mark, then insert into our table name is takes and the attributes are takes underline ID class number class underline number class name then semester then the student number. Then we add values. Takes ID is one, it should be integer. 1315, class number, class name, cam, Semester Fall 2020, and then the second semicolon quotation, quotation marks, and now we execute this. SQL command. Let's run this. Okay. We write another SQL command. marks insert into takes the table name then the attributes were defined for this table you can copy from here takes the student number and then we add values Takes ID, let's say it's two. Class number 5970. And it's a DSA class. Fall 2020. And again, the second student, which is the primary key for the other table. Semicolon. In quotation marks. Again, we execute this cursor dot execute the SQL command. Okay, let's run this. And then don't forget the last line connection dot commit. So we created this table, we inserted tuples, and now we can write a query. So here we want to find the last name of all the students taking DSA 5970. So we write a SQL command. It means that now we have a condition and we are going to use the where keyword. SQL command, select last name. So we want to find the last name, so just one attribute from two tables, takes and students, where 
So this is the part that uh, we make sure um, we, con uh, we use the connected um, tables properly. So where a student's dot student underline number is equal to tapes dot std underline number. So a student underline number is a primary key for this table, it's also a foreign key for this one. So we want to make sure that uh, we find the same students. And then we have the keyword and class number equal to 5970 and class name equal to DSA. So we get access to both tables and then we have this condition. So after we define this SQL script, then we execute it. Again, to see the result, we need to apply the fetch all function, cursor.fetch all, and then we want to go through all items in that variable. So we write a for loop and then we print it. Now let's try to implement this in a notebook. So this is the query part. I'm adding a comment, comment here. And now the SQL underline command, the quotation marks. Then we have the select a statement. We want to find last name, so L name. from two tables, tapes, and a student. We have our condition where a student dot, so we call the table first, and then the attribute, which is std underline number, equals to takes the other table and then the foreign key std underline number and we have and the other condition the class number is 5970 and another condition class name is DSA then we have quotation marks now we need to execute this SQL command so cursor dot execute this command let's run this first okay there is a typo here so L name we fix it so we could run the SQL command. Now we want to save results in a variable. So we need to apply the fetch all function. So cursor dot fetch all consistent with this query. Now we just write a for loop make sure we see all the results so for rn result colon print r now let's run this so we can see that there is just one item it's a tuple and the last name is johnson so if you go back to this table we had two we inserted two tuples and the one who was taking DSA 5970 is a second a student. 
and you can see it, it, the last name is Johnson. And that's how we uh, run a query with the concept of a primary key and a foreign key. Okay. Okay. So with this example, we wrap up our discussion about uh, SQL Lit 3 library. Next time, we'll talk about uh, SQL Alchemy, another library in Python, which allows us to run the SQL command.